Welcome to Learn at Ease. In this video, I will explain G proteins and GPCR. This video will enable you to learn structure and function of GPCR and G protein. Different GPCR, G protein and effector assembly. Different hormones that activate different GPCR associated assemblies. So let's get started. The basic representation of cell membrane is shown. Here GPCR that is G protein coupled receptor is shown which is a transmembrane protein. G protein is composed of three subunits, namely, alpha, beta and gamma bounded to GPCR. This is trimeric protein as it is composed of three subunits. The alpha subunit is bounded to GDP that is, guanosine diphosphate. Away from these assembly, an effector molecule is shown, this can be either protein or an ion channel. This representation is the basic assembly. Now, we will see each of these components in detail. In the animation, the GPCR is shown, this is a transmembrane protein possessing seven hydrophobic segments as shown below, each of these hydrophobic segments consists of 20 to 28 amino acids. These hydrophobic segments are embedded in the lipid bilayer. The hydrophilic regions are exposed on the exterior face of the cell and inside the cytoplasm. The N-terminal of GPCR is exposed outside the cell and the C-terminal is exposed in the cytoplasm. The other name of GPCR are, serpentine receptor and, 7 transmembrane segment receptor. This GPCR in absence of ligand or hormone is bounded to a trimeric G protein as shown in the animation. Let us see the GPCR and G protein complex in detail. The gamma subunit is the largest subunit with the molecular weight of 7500 to 10000 daltons. It is anchored into the membrane and bound to the beta subunit. Next is the beta subunit having molecular weight 37000 daltons. It is not anchored to the cell membrane but it is bounded to gamma subunit. Last subunit is the alpha subunit, which is again anchored into the cell membrane. Alpha subunit can reversibly bind to gamma beta dimer and it also binds with GDP and GTP. Most importantly, alpha subunit also possesses intrinsic GTPase activity. As this trimeric protein can bind to guanine nucleotides, GDP and GTP through alpha subunit, it is collectively named as G protein. In the animation, the GPCR and G protein is shown in their native inactive form. Now let us go back to the original animation. The hormone or ligand from blood will bind to its GPCR when its concentration is high enough for its binding to the receptor. This will cause the change in the conformation of GPCR, this will then cause alpha subunit to exchange its GDP with GTP. Note that GDP is an abbreviation for guanosine diphosphate and GTP is an abbreviation for guanosine triphosphate. By this the alpha subunit gets activated and releases itself from GPCR and leaving gamma beta dimer. GTP bounded alpha subunit will activate effector component by binding to it. As a result of which, effector will produce second messenger. Note that, I will provide information about effector and second messenger later in this video. Now, alpha subunit has GTPase activity by which it will remove phosphate from GTP converting it to GDP. This will cause alpha subunit to go back and bind with gamma beta dimer inactivating effector. The trimeric G protein will then rebind to the GPCR. This cycle will continue till the concentration of ligand hormone is high enough to activate GPCR. Again, alpha subunit will replace its GDP with GTP, splitting up with gamma beta dimer and GPCR. Alpha subunit will bind to effector activating it to produce second messenger. Slowly, Alpha subunit with its GTPase activity will remove phosphate from GTP and convert it to GDP. This will cause alpha subunit to go and bind to gamma beta dimer. Now during this cycle, if concentration of hormone ligand is reduced such that now the GPCR cannot bind to it, the trimeric G protein will bind to GPCR and attain its native inactive form and the cycle will stop. Now let us see what the effector is. 
Out of many the most widely found effector component associated with trimeric G protein assembly are adenylate cyclase, phospholipase and ion channels. The first two are enzymes. Let us now see the function of each effector. The assembly with adenylate cyclase effector in its inactive form is shown. The hormones such as glucagon, epinephrine, odorants and other beta-adrenergics can activate GPCR belonging to this assembly. Briefly, when these specific ligand bind to GPCR, conformation change will allow alpha subunit to replace GDP with GTP. This will activate the cycle and eventually effector adenylate cyclase will get activated. Activated adenylate cyclase converts ADP to cyclic adenosine monophosphate which is second messenger. Cyclic AMP will further activate cascade of the reactions to induce desired effect in the cell. This is the brief representation of adenylate cyclase functioning. Now let us see the functioning of phospholipase C. The assembly with phospholipase C effector in its inactive form is shown. The hormones such as serotonin, vasopressin, gonadotropin releasing hormone, etc., can activate GPCR belonging to this assembly. Briefly, when these specific ligand binds to GPCR, conformation change will allow the alpha subunit to replace GDP with GTP. This will activate the cycle and eventually effector phospholipase C will get activated, by which phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate will split up into inositol tresphosphate and diacylglycerol, abbreviated as IP3 and DAG. Both these molecules act as second messenger and induces cascade of reactions. IP3 will also cause calcium to release from the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here, calcium also acts as secondary messenger. Thus, this system induces three types of second messenger to induce cascade of different reactions. This is the brief representation of phospholipase C functioning. Now let us see the functioning of ion channel as effector. The assembly with ion channel in its inactive form is shown. The hormones such as acetylcholine, endorphins, opioids, etc., can activate GPCR belonging to this assembly. Briefly, when these specific ligand binds to GPCR, conformation change will allow alpha subunit to replace GDP with GTP. This will activate the cycle and eventually effector ion channel get activated, this will cause opening of the ion channel. Thus, Ions from extracellular environment can enter the cytoplasm and act as second messenger. With this video you learned. Structure and function of GPCR, G protein and effector. Different hormones that activate different GPCR associated assemblies. Hope you enjoyed my video, stay tuned to my channel. Feel free to share, like and comment. Subscribe to LAE. See you soon.